record anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're just trying to see when it starts and when it ends. <laughs> Which we Hi. finally figured out. Hi. <laughs> I'm Felicia Slattery, and here in my house is my very good friend and publisher, Kristen Eckstein. Yay! Yay! She's here together. all the way from North Carolina. I'm here in the Chicago area, and Kristen's in town, and we said, hey, let us answer a few questions for folks, right? Yeah. Kristen's a book publishing and book writing expert, and I know a little something about public speaking and selling books. <laughs> selling <laughs> books through speaking. So we put it out on Facebook to a few folks, and actually um, one of the questions came from Teddy Barris. So hi, Teddy. We're answering hi, your Teddy. question. Um, Teddy wants to know three best practices for marketing a book through public speaking and three won't work practices. <laughs> so we want to keep this short, right? Yeah. So we're going to do one and one after that. <laughs> yeah, because so we have more questions. We have more questions. Okay. So um, one thing that you want to make sure that you do is um, in terms of speaking and selling your book, and this, is, this is kind of an obvious one, but a lot of people forget to mention that they have a book. Weird, right? Yeah. But they do. And it's 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 very odd. So make sure that as you're talking and you're delivering your presentation, that you mention that you have a book, first of all, that you mention that the book is here with you and that you have the book for sale. And then also share a little bit of content from that book during your presentation. A lot of folks who've written books have tons of content and tons of great information you can share. And if you're not talking about some of the content in the book, you're not giving your audience a reason to say, oh, gosh, i got to read more about this. Mm -hmm. So you've got to give folks a reason to read more about that. So, um, And I guess that would be what works is mention that you've got a book and use some content from the book. And what doesn't work is not mentioning that you don't have a book, that not you a book. that you do have a book, <laughs> <laughs> not um, telling people a little bit of the content in your book. And some folks are scared of that. Like, well, if I give away content in my book, then people are going to want to buy the book. Can actually, you really give away a 100-page book in a half an hour or an hour on stage? No. No, you can't. It's impossible. Impossible. So you can't give all of the content away. And, by the way, they're not going to remember it anyway. No. So give the <laughs> a lot of people don't even take notes. <laughs> right, right. So feel free to share some of the content that's in your book, and then people will be really excited to go and buy it. Think about movie trailers. Um, movie the movie producers and executives they put together these really cool trailers, and it's often the best parts of the movie. Yeah. So in like a minute and a half. Right. So share some of the best parts of your book so people are really enticed and excited to go and buy it. And what doesn't work, one more thing that doesn't work, is not getting on stage to sell your book. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work at all. No. And, and <laughs> we're laughing about that, but a lot of people aren't real sure how speaking to sell a book works, and there are def definitely formulas and strategies that you should follow when you're on stage, mm -hmm. but if you get on stage and you tell people you've got a book and you share some of your content, there really isn't a way you're not going to sell your book as long as you're speaking to the right audience for yeah. the book. You'll sell at least one copy. At least. At, at least. Mi bare minimum. Right. So, um, and, and that is the mistake then would be not speaking to the right audience for your book. If you speak mm -hmm. to the wrong audience for your book, you're not going to you may possibly sell a book, but when you speak to the right audience, you will definitely sell a book just by being on stage and sharing a little bit of the content and letting people know that it's there. So there's three and more things that work and don't work. There That's we all. go. All right. That was, that was very cool. All right. And yeah, actually, I wanted to plug your book. Oh, and you don't okay. have one. I don't right have one. Right. I'm going to go get it. You okay. talk. So you talk. Felicia's going to go grab her book, 21 Ways to Make Money Speaking. And this is one that I published underneath my company, my 21 Ways series. And it's absolutely fantastic book. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And a lot of the stuff she just talked about is in her book. So as you can see, we're speaking virtually. She was just on your virtual stage in your living room, in your office, wherever you're watching this right now on your phone while you're in line for something at the grocery store. I have no idea where you're watching it. But wherever you are, that is a virtual stage that she just talked to you about stuff that she does and it's in her book so I'm plugging her book she's going to grab a copy so we can show it off 
and I bet you anything, at least one person watching this is going to go buy the book because hopefully somebody is in our target audience. Oh, she's got a few. I have multiple books. Yay. Okay, so this one's my book. Here it is, 21 Yay. Ways to Make Money Speaking, and you'll see it's an Amazon bestseller. Yay. Five categories on yeah, day one. Yeah, which usually doesn't happen. Three categories. My I got five. Awesome. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. Amazon glitch is more. They're awesome. It happened because it was a fantastic book and oh, a lot of people right. liked it. That's why. It's because you rock. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, and then I got Kristen's book. This is Twenty One Ways to Powerfully Network Your Business. Very awesome. Mm -hmm. And what we're all talking about today is Twenty One Ways to Write and Publish Your Nonfiction Book. And I'm going to go into another thing we talked about okay. before this recording and say if you would like to get this in a PDF format for free, you can go to JumpStartMyBook.com. Okay. And you can download the free PDF of 20 Ways to Write and Publish Your Nonfiction Book. And of course, if you want the hard copy, you can go to Amazon and buy it or Barnes Noble or wherever you buy your books from. It is listed there. So that takes me to a question for you yes. about selling ebooks from the stage because I get this question a lot. And in my personal opinion, it's very difficult to sell a Kindle book from the stage, mm -hmm. especially to an audience that doesn't understand that they can read Kindle books on any device, even right. if they don't own a Kindle. Mm -hmm. So they're sitting there going, Well, I wish you had a hard copy. And hard copies, from what I've seen when you're selling a physical book, do a lot better because they can go to the back of the room, they can physically right. flip through it and right. purchase it. However, you have like this ninja trick that you just told me about, which I just gave you an example of, and she's going to explain it a little bit more in depth, about how you can sell Kindle books from the stage very well. So, Okay, tell me. So here you go. All right, so if you're talking to an audience that happens to have smartphones, of course the easiest way is to say download the, the Kindle apps free from Amazon, and then you can go get the book at Amazon right now while we're talking. Go for it. It's, here's the title. Here's how you find it, right? And actually, if you were really smart, you'd create a redirect and say, here's my book link.com, mm -hmm. and then redirect that right to the Amazon page. So there's like a super ninja trick. Yeah. And that's if you're there in a room full of people who get it and have, right. have PDAs. And, and have their phones on them. I've been yes. to several conferences where they ask to turn the cell phones off. Right. So make sure that they right. have access to it. So what happens if that's not the case? What right. happens if your audience are people who don't aren't necessarily tech savvy or they don't have their computers on or they don't have a smartphone or whatever the case may be? And so here's how you sell your Kindle book. You actually create a PDF file and make it just a regular ebook. Mm -hmm. And then I actually have order forms that I use, old school pieces of paper order forms, and I pass out these order forms. And I say, if you want the book, go ahead and fill out the order form. And then I send those folks, and then they give me their cat, usually is cash, depending on the book. This this particular book is, is what do we have it marked as? A $6.99, maybe $7.99, whatever it is, right? So I, I sell them for five bucks in the back of the room. Um, because Amazon discounts them, so why don't I, right? Yeah. So I sell them for five bucks in the back of the room. So people give me their five bucks if they want the digital version of it. Mm -hmm. And then I go home and I send them via email the book. And I actually yeah. have a PDF. And I set I have it um, set up as a as an autoresponder opt-in so then I collect that information and I have the readers of, of that book so that's actually my preferred way to sell books believe it or not is because now I know who bought my book because I you've got it on a list you can follow up to later yes and now I'm like okay that's great I got the PDF it's very cool I really really want to read it on my Kindle because Kindle has a different format than reading PDFs it doesn't read PDFs very easily so at that point your super super ninja trick <laughs> Which now you suddenly remember, like, yes, so awesome. Tell me. Okay, so it's really easy. If the person who has a Kindle and they want it on the Kindle, so you sell it via the, the form and you get them on your list and you, you send them the PDF and they go, yeah, but I really want the Kindle. And then you go, okay. So you go to your Kindle book and as the author or the publisher of your book. If you have Amazon Direct to Kindle. Amazon so Direct to Kindle. Them. There you go. I would just call my publisher and say, <laughs> can we make it free? And that's what you do. So you yeah. make the book free, and then you buy the book. We don't have to buy it if you make it free. Well, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. so you can send them the link and go, here, yeah. go get the book for go free. Go get the book. It's free just today. So you just email today. that list, right. and everybody on that list will go download it for free for their Kindle. And if anybody else happens to see it, they get it that day, too. But, right. You know, and that's... Yay, because you got more people reading your stuff. Mm -hmm. And then so. you ask them very nicely for a review in another email. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> because they got the book for free. Yeah, <laughs> you got the book for free. How cool would it be if you shared this with other people? Because it probably helped you out. Give me five yeah. stars. Five stars. <laughs> five stars is always kind of nice. So there's how you sell Kindle books.
from the stage. And that is so, such a cool idea. Thank you. Love it. So cool. All right. So one of the other things we're talking about mm -hmm. is my book, my upcoming book, Kill the Elevator Speech. Which Stop. was kind of a mess. Stop it. <laughs> Stop selling. Start connecting. It's fantastic. No, no, no. The book itself is amazing. Yes. Like the content. Yeah, I mean, she's just mumbling to herself content here, and I am going. <laughs> the file, the file though, was a little the bit of a mess. The file's a little messy. The word document yeah. was, you know, yeah. semi-organized. Yeah. And I was getting a little stuck and confused every time I would go in and I would open this big, huge file that's got almost twenty-six thousand words. I need to add what another words? nine to ten thousand words to make it a really full book the way that I want to make it. And they've got to be good words. They can't just be mm -hmm. like. And this book is very, 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 very good. And you should really, 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 really not use the elevator speech, right? Can't be those kind of words. Yeah. So I want to add some good quality words. And I keep kind of getting stuck in, oh, wait, I need to just check that research a little bit more. And I want to say this in a different way. Now, wait, where was that chapter where I talked about listening? Oh, wait, where was that chapter where I talked about how do you connect with people? Scroll, when you're scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, scroll, oh scroll. look, I need to fix that. Right. We're searching. <laughs> totally fine. distracted. Or I was highlighting yeah. things. And it was just... Not good. And so Kristen said, have you heard of? Scrivener. And I said, no. What is that? It's just a spell. <laughs> it's Scrivener. S-C-R-I-V-E-N-E-R. -E -E okay, say it slower. S-C-R-I-V-E-N-E-R. -E -E Scrivener. Okay. And it is an amazing software tool that I recently, well, I've known about it, but I recently started playing with it for my next really big book because, I mean, these books are easy to write in a Word document. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just thin. 10,000 words. Yeah, about that's 10, easy. 10,000 words, 11,000 words. Well, mine was, yeah. Actually, this was 9,000 words. <laughs> <laughs> Super easy yeah. to knock those out in one Word document, right? Absolutely. Not so much for an eight-part book and 40-some chapters and front matter and back matter and appendices and... You name it. Going on and on. Whatever I can fit in this book, I'm fitting this book because I want to make an example of how a book can look when it's all said, finished, printed, done. Right. Well, I was getting overwhelmed with my book, and um, I had already heard of this software, so I had a couple of people who were like, I'm sick of you complaining about it. Go get the software. <laughs> okay, I'll go get it. And I started playing with it, and it has a little bit of a learning curve. It's really not too bad. You can start out very simply. I'm now doing some more advanced stuff with it. The really cool thing is, and I wish I could show you because it's just so freaking cool, you can put different chapters into different documents all in one file. So you can close different chapters and not look at them. Mm -hmm. And so you're not distracted by, oh, yeah, it's a shiny object over there. I need to go finish that one, or I need to go research this over here. Which is another trick we need to come back to, right. the researching trip. Okay. Um, so the, the software is really cool because you can also put it into folders. So what I've done is I've got a folder for part one, and inside part one I've got a folder for each chapter, mm -hmm. and inside each chapter I have documents. And what I've done is I've yes. broken it way down into every subsection has its own document. You don't have to go that far. I just do that because I don't know necessarily where I want my subsections of my chapters to be. My subheadings might be... You know, I might have one about front matter, and I might break front matter down into multiple different things. And there's, you know, front matter in a book can be preface, introduction, um, forward. forward. There's a lot of different things you can have, and they can go in multiple different orders. Right. So I haven't decided what order I want to talk about them for mm -hmm. my book, because my book is about book publishing. I haven't figured that one out yet. And so what's really cool about Scrivener is I can just click on just whatever file I want, whatever document, and move it by dragging it up and down, and that reorganizes my entire book. Nice. Which is really cool. Really so nice. So we started Fully Shot very simply, mm -hmm. and I gave her the assignment to copy and paste each topic or chapter and go ahead and move that over into Scrivener so that she can plug it in. It was awesome. <laughs> she's and like, at first she's a little bit, I don't know if I want this learning curve with this new software, oh. and then I hear her mumbling, and then I hear her going, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. I can grab your worksheet for a second. Sure. So after you get your Scrivener document set up, one of the other things you can do is, um, this is actually part of a course I don't even offer anymore. I'll oh. tell you how you can get it. Um, this course used to sell for $97, and just this yes. one worksheet makes it worth it. This is actually a worksheet that I do in my workshops. So what you want to do is put your topic, which for her is Kill the Elevator Speech, or title, and then the issues that she's going to address, 
in her book mm -hmm. and her personal solution to those issues. So as you can see, we had to do a little coaching and talk her through a few things right in here. <laughs> and what's cool is after you have it in Scrivener, you can take the same worksheet and put your chapter at the top mm -hmm. and then break down your subheadings and write just a short little description of what each chapter is going to be about. And that way you've got it on paper because we were discussing earlier, there's nothing like hand to paper when you're brainstorming. True. I mean, nothing like that. If you use this worksheet and just brainstorm away your different chapters and subheadings, it will come out really easily. And then you can actually write those chapters and subheadings in Scrivener. Yep. Which makes it so easy. Now, Scrivener has a couple other little tricks to it. It's really a massive amount of software. There's a lot you can do with it. One of the things you can do is export it as an EPUB for Ooh. Kindle and iPad and Nook and so on. It's fancy. It's very fancy. If you get fancy with bullet points and images, you might still have some programming issues. However, I've heard nothing but good things from people who have done that. I have not started doing that myself yet because I still rely on a professional ebook programmer because that's just the way I am. I like to outsource anyway. So <laughs> that's just the way it is. But if you want to try this, but if you want to try it, time. definitely try it and let me know how you liked it because yeah. I'd like to let other people know, you know that that's available. So how can you get the finished book course? Well, you can't. <laughs> that's okay yeah you, you sort of can't fair. actually if you go to selfpublishondemand.com and you type in publish me now as a coupon code you can get my entire self publishing course for $97 and you get this as a free bonus not this worksheet the whole course the wow. whole writing course which covers both fiction and nonfiction so if you want to do that you can what's um, the wait what's what where where are we on again and what's the coupon code selfpublishondemand.com and the coupon code is publish me now all one word, and that will take $900 off the price. Makes it $97. And it includes my writing course, which used to sell. I actually did sell it for $97 by itself. Nice. So just make sure you use these worksheets because they rock. It's very nice. And Scrivener, and give Scrivener, it a try. Scrivener, yes. It's $40 software. Oh yeah. You can get a coupon. So I got a coupon code. I just I just Googled just Google. coupon codes. Super easy, mm -hmm. and so I saved like eight bucks on it, mm -hmm. and I downloaded it and was up so and running with it in minutes. It was 30, 32 32? bucks That's plus, plus tax. tax. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, so we got a, two more questions, and um, we can both answer both of these because okay. we both write books. So one of them, um, Silky. Silky, Silky, we sort of answered your question. I would say check out Scrivener. Um, her question was, what's a realistic time frame? How much time does it require to write a book? Um, publishing has changed so much. What's the best way in 2003? Well, writing has not changed. 2013. 2013, sorry. Okay, wait, but that's not, that's not, so wait. So, so here, I, got, I got my contracts for this book mm -hmm. and Kill the Elevator Speech within two days of each other. You see the book is in my hand. <laughs> and kill the elevator speeches on our computer. And kill the elevator speeches on a computer still. So this book I wrote in about six days. Um, why? Because it's shorter. Also because of because of it's 21 ways, I was able to sit down and actually Kristen and I did this together. I kind of, you know, off the top of my head rattled off a whole bunch and we kind of were in a Skype conversation and we're chatting brainstorming back, brainstorming, brainstorming ideas. And so ways. by the end of a quick Skype chat, I had the 21 ways mm -hmm. and because the, the the publisher only wanted 10,000 words, it was yeah, like, all right, well, that's not a whole ton that and I have to And the publisher kind of bugged her to get it done. Yeah. So get it quick, get it quick, get it quick, get it quick. I said, all right, I can get like, it quick. I need your book. So I got it done within, I wrote it in six days and I, and I did not take existing content. It's all fresh new. All content. fresh new. I didn't take blog posts. I didn't take old articles. I didn't transcribe old videos, which by the way, I'm not dissing at all. That's no, a great that's... way to write a book. And in fact, if you have all of that past content, that was my first book, which is not available anywhere, so don't worry about it. But that was my first book. I'm doing a second edition of it. But my first book that I did was... <laughs> You've been doing a second edition for a year. I know. Well, that's, that's be... I got sick. Yeah, Give a true. girl a break. So, and that's why I didn't get the Kill the Elevator speech book done. It was that was supposed yeah, to have been done. Yeah, and it's a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger. A lot bigger. And it requires. Um, this is this book is based completely on my expertise as a person who's made money speaking and taught thousands of people around the world how to make money speaking. The new book includes a lot of research because I want to have a lot of evidence in terms of why the elevator speech doesn't work because people have used this thing, they love it. So I have to really kind of tread lightly and I want to make sure that all of that great content is in the book. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more research that's been involved and um, I'm, I'm 
if you happen to know me, you already know this story, but um, when that book was due, I was in the hospital with pneumonia that never resolved. And fast forward a few months later, because it never resolved, they ended up doing a, a bronchoscopy. So they went down and into my down my windpipe, and they said, "Oh, look, there's a tumor." It turned out it was lung cancer. So, um, and I so I sent a note to my other publisher who's doing Kill the Elevator Speech. Kristen's not doing that one. Mm -hmm. And I said, "So, have you ever had an author um, go through the trouble of getting cancer to miss a deadline?" I'm just wondering. I just want to know. <laughs> He said, no, you're the what first. What a great way to handle it. You're the first. I said, okay. So don't use that excuse, don't use that excuse. unless it's real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, don't do that. Yeah, That's that would bad just be karma bad. all the way around. Don't do that. <laughs> so anyway, um, so they've been very generous about just extending my deadline, and uh, I'm like super close to getting it done, and now that I've got Scrivener, it'll be done. So the answer to the question, how long does it take to write a book? Well, you can write a book in six days. You can write a book in a year and a half or two years. It depends yeah. on how much content you already have prepared that you can put into the book. Right. It depends on your level of expertise related to the book, and it depends on how much time you have devoted in your schedule, in your time, in your life, Mm -hmm. to be able to put that book together. It also depends on are you self-publishing and doing every single thing yourself mm -hmm. or are you going to work with a publisher? Are you going to work with a vanity publisher? Are you going to work with a, a traditional publisher? Are you going to um, outsource the editing? Yes, you are. Please. Do not edit your own book. Please. Uh, you know, you're going to outsource the cover design, the interior layout. Please. There's all, yes, do all <laughs> really. Um, like there's self-publishing and then there's like shooting yourself in the foot. So yeah. So just self-publish the right way. Outsource the right things. But then are there other pieces you're going to outsource? You can have a ghostwriter part, write part of your book for you because you speak better and you want somebody else to clean that up. And that's fine to have a ghostwriter put that together. Lots of great oh. books are written by ghostwriters for oh, yeah. sure. So and there's it's a lot of ways. still using your content. Yeah, it's point. still your content. So lots of ways to get your book done. So you can do it as quickly as you want. You can take as long as you want. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. Just get it done. Just well, first of all, don't use the excuse of perfectionism or I I need to get it worded just right. I mean, if you're starting to find yourself using those kinds of excuses to get your book done, it's going to take you forever. I mean, really forever. I I have some authors who are still writing, and I'm like, you paid me like five years ago. Where is your book? So you you don't want it to you know life happens, stuff gets in the way, health issues happen. That's all fine. Um, well, it's not fine. Don't ever get cancer again. No, I won't. Um, <laughs> that, not in the plan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I mean, so, well, you know, the fact of the matter is stuff happens. I mean, last month, all my websites were hacked. Oh. All 23. I pretty much lost a month's worth of business because I couldn't sign up clients. My contracts weren't working. I had to do a couple of them old school over the phone. And it was a really trying time. We're still cleaning up a little bit of the mess. You know, the bulk of it is done. But that's habit. Right. Not something I can control. So did I work on my book? No. I didn't work on it hardly at all the past month because I've been sitting on Skype watching my team, you know, ask me because I was on call for, what do we do with this file? Yeah. You know, yeah. Do you still need this? And um, thankfully, we killed a lot of the websites. Yay. Like killing my all websites. the bad stuff. All yes. the bad stuff. All and, gone. And half of us. Nothing like that kind of thing happening to revamp your entire business. Right. Um, anyhow, uh, my answer to it is I wrote this book in four hours. I would not publish what I wrote in four hours. No way. I sent it. I went back through it myself. I added stuff to it. I took some stuff away. I edited, and then I sent it off to a professional editor. And about a month later, I had it published because this book was the first in the series, and it was a template that we used for the rest of the books. Mm -hmm. This book took me a couple of days. Mm -hmm. it's, it's short, and it's something I know a lot about. Obviously, I know a lot more about publishing and writing a book than anything else because that's what I do. Um, the book I'm writing right now is everything in my head that I know about publishing plus a lot of great resources from people I trust, mm -hmm. which is the research part of it. Right. And so what I'm doing is right, I'm writing all of my stuff first, which is something we talked about earlier today. Yep. I'm getting everything down in my head for, or that's in my head first. I'm not doing any research. I do have a lot of things I need to research because I want to you know, cite different authors. I want to find cool quotes online about writing and stuff. And the thing is if I get caught up in all that, my book won't ever get done because the stuff that's still in my head is still going to be there. And the fact of the matter is great books are still going to be published that I could reference. I have to stop somewhere. So what I do is I do a little ninja trick and I take my little 
finger here, and I hold down <laughs> the shift key, and usually it's on the number it's on the number eight on PC too. So on Mac and PC, it's both the number eight, the little asterisk, little star, uh -huh. and I type three of those in a row. Anywhere I need to research something, look something up, I'm not sure about a fact that I'm quoting, I type three little stars and I keep writing. That way my flow isn't interrupted, I'm not worried about, you know, am I going to forget to research this later, I'm not stuck on Wikipedia, which leads me to YouTube, which leads me to Facebook, which means my whole day is gone, <laughs> <laughs> which does happen, um, but those three little asterisks are uh, just a great way to, to keep going and research later. That's so awesome. later I can use the find feature. Mm -hmm and go through and just do all my research all at once, or what's even better, I can send my manuscript to a virtual assistant and say, search for the three asterisks, because they say next to them, research whatever, do the research and put it in there for me. And then I just have to go back through search for three asterisks and clean up the research so it flows with my text. See, so lots of ways to outsource. Research. Researching really stinks. Oh, I love it, I love it. Oh. <laughs> Which I I've noticed research, people who love to research, mm -hmm. they take even longer to write because you want to know everything there is to know about the thing right. you're looking up. Right. My husband's that way. He could research. Oh, I won't even get started on the stuff that he researches. <laughs> he has to research everything like until he can't find any more results in Google for it. Oh, no, see, I topic. see. I do academic research as a, as somebody what taught, taught college and lived in the academic world. I do like hardcore research journal research and that oh, it, it, and that takes it takes of time brain power and a brain power time. right yeah. so I like that strategy of okay here's what I know and here's what I need to know more of so that I can go back mm -hmm. and do that research later so I write right. in chunks and research in chunks it's very cool good tip very cool love it okay and then one last question that we're going to take because we're getting a little long, although we oh wait, we have one more person. Hang on. We'll see. Um, so Catrice Jackson says, how do you get endorsements from known or influential people? Guy Kawasaki. What happened? <laughs> Twitter? What? Well, yeah, how did that happen? I think it was Google Plus. And okay, I explain, explain the story. Okay, so the next first question. of all, I haven't gotten an endorsement for my book from Guy yet. And Guy, this is a heads up. I will be sending it to you eventually. Actually, I think I already emailed him about it like long ago before the hacking and everything. Hi, Guy. Um, hi, Guy. I remember when you did a pink bow on Twitter. Okay, <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> it cracks me up. I love that. Okay. So a uh, Guy and I were, uh, he's a big crowdsourcer, which basically means you can get a lot of people to give you feedback or get reviewers for free, which is an awesome strategy. So he's asking a question about vanity publishers because he wanted to know about a particular publisher and if anyone had any personal experiences with them. And I had to respond because if he was going to recommend them in his book, I wanted him to know the truth. So I just responded about the recent lawsuits, which mm -hmm. weren't so recent. They've been under lawsuits since I knew them by their previous company name, which was in 2003. Yeah, back in 2003. So I started writing back and forth, and I got into it with a novelist who did his, he had three novellas out on Amazon in Kindle format, and their book covers were squished like this, oh. so you couldn't even read the titles. And he was a self-proclaimed self-publishing expert. So we're getting into a conversation. I'm trying to be really nice because he was totally wrong. <laughs> right. And then, then this was on Twitter. This was this was on Google Plus. On actually. Google Plus. Okay, Google Plus. Yeah, this was on because guy guys there now out on right. Google Plus. Yeah. So we're we're chatting back and forth, and the guy contacts me. He says, "Right, here's my email." I'm like, "Okay, I don't know what this is about." So he asked me if he could send me his manuscript for Ape, author, publisher, entrepreneur, which is an awesome book, by the way. Go get it because I worked on it. It's awesome. And he sent it to me, and <clears throat> I couldn't help myself. He just wanted me to do a review or something. I'm not really sure what he wanted. He didn't really ask. So I edited the thing. Ooh. It was already being edited by a professional, which was great. And I didn't edit it for grammar and punctuation or that kind of stuff so much as I put comments in it as to, why don't you think about this, and you need to cover this, and here's another option that authors could pursue. You know, From my personal experience of starting a publishing company, which is totally different than self-publishing through a publishing company. Mm -hmm. So I started adding in things because he told me he wanted it to be the best resource he could make it on self-publishing. Okay, well, I will help you there. So he mentioned me like half a dozen times in the book, which is really cool. Very nice. I get people coming every so often, you know, they heard from me from the book, and, cool. and it is a really great book, so definitely go check it out. And uh, that's the guy Kawasaki story. So I connected with a celebrity 
by, which he wouldn't call himself that, but he is. Right. Um, I connected with him by reaching out to him on social media where he hangs out because I don't hang out on Google+. Plus. This is a Google Plus Hangout. That's just because it was the easiest way to record us talking. Right. So it's not necessarily something that I would yeah, normally do or hang out on. I, I'm rarely on Google+. Plus. I'm on Facebook. So if you want to reach me, go to Facebook. Um, so I went, I found where he was, I happened to be there, and I started a dialogue. I showed him my expertise by interacting with his audience, mm -hmm. with him directly. Mm -hmm. And um, what he actually wrote me was, um, send me an email because you know your stuff. So apparently I made an impression. So that's the key, is so you want to you wanna find the social medium where your celebrity endorser will be. Right. You, so wherever they're, wherever they're hanging out, and that could be different from where you're hanging out, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then you want to interact around them and with their audience mm -hmm. in a meaningful way. And if there's a way that you could do it on there, if, if they happen to be on Facebook, in their fan page, for example, they're going to see that if, you know, on, in Google+, mm -hmm. in among a question or something that they were to ask, you can start to ask questions and reply to questions. And then just sharing of your knowledge and your expertise. Right. That's really, really what, it, what it boils down to is to start a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Because celebrities are people too. Right. I mean, if anything, my relationship with learning, you know, meeting and hanging out online with Guy is that he's just a person too. You know, we're, we are all in the same boat called life together, and it doesn't matter how high up the financial food chain you are, uh, they're still real people and they love to be reached out to and, and loved and appreciated. So I didn't even do it with the intention to get, I wasn't even planning on revisiting the book I started five years ago and actually writing it this year <laughs> when I talked to him. I just was like, oh, hey, there's this person who needs help and it's on Guy Kawasaki's board so I may as well you know, help out. Why not? I'm not doing anything right mm -hmm. now. And that's what started the relationship. Now that can go all different directions. I have no idea where it's going to go and I honestly don't care. Um, honestly, I would say you, you know, that takes time you know, to build that rapport with these mm -hmm. celebrity authors. Start getting endorsements from people who are in your field mm -hmm. who you already know because chances are you already know a celebrity and a Felicia. You're funny. Okay, wait, and I have another I have another tip around this which is totally different. Cool. And it won't be a surprise coming from me. Get on stage and speak. Oh, yeah. Because when you, it, and it doesn't it really doesn't matter what stage that you're on, get pictures of you on stage, get video of you on stage. Um, if you're at an event where there are other speakers, get, take a picture. <laughs> That was good. That, that was, was good. good. Take a picture. <laughs> 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 um, take a take a picture with the other speakers because when you're a speaker, that elevates you in the mind of the other speakers, of the audience members, and of people who are not even at that event. They see, oh wow, this person's speaking. They must know their stuff. So get on stage as much as possible and get lots of evidence of that out there in the world. Again, pictures, videos, mm -hmm. etc., testimonials all good ways to get um, evidence that hey you do know your stuff because I know there are a lot of folks out there who are celebrity type people in their niche in their in their field and they're gonna check you out before they do anything and they're gonna want to see like do you really know what you're talking about do you really know your stuff so you need to have a good website right you need, yeah, you need to have all these website. places all these pieces in place yeah. So you don't want a picture of your cat you, as your avatar. Please even. no. And my cat's yeah, adorable. I know it is. Not everyone who's but not as your avatar. No. Because the people they're gonna they're gonna go, wow, this is a cat the, no, make I'm not sure doing your business. Make sure your avatar reflects you too. Right. I mean Unless the book <laughs> unless the book is about cats. Yeah, that that could be. That would be. Yeah. Right. I think Grumpy Cat could write a book and sure. put his picture, sure. her picture on it. Right. That would work. So anyway, that's the point. So you can reach out to them via social media. You can get yourself on stage and mm -hmm. elevate your status and your credibility. And that will not instantly ensure because there is no easy button. Mm -hmm. But Don't we wish. that will get you to Staples a point one. where you're, they do. And you just push <laughs> the button, but nothing happens. <laughs> it just says, that was easy. That was easy. Well, Yay. <laughs> but anyway, so you that will up your chances of getting someone to say yes to endorsing your book who's got a really great, great big name which is awesome. There are other ways, but those are a couple of the big ones. So anyway, that looks like the end of our questions, and we've been on for a while right now. So I want to say thank you so much mm -hmm. 
for being here and listening. Thanks for coming to my house. Oh, it's so fun. Yay! Next time you have to come to my house. Yeah, and you gave a whole bunch of links. Let me give one. So yeah. killtheelevatorspeech.com, the book. Is the hat there is there are some tips if you want to kill the elevator speech you can go there kill the elevator speech dot com mm -hmm. and it's just free tips there you just add your name and email address and I'll send you an, an audio recording that explains more of an interview that I did and then um, just a little written tips report so that's cool. what you can get there awesome awesome all right well, well, where, well where can people find your blog oh FeliciaSlattery dot com you can go there I have a blog there what's your blog ultimatebookcoach.com. Okay, so you can find us there. Yeah. All right. Have a great find day. Find us on social media. Yay. We'll be hanging out on Facebook. Yes, as our own names, Felicia yes. Slattery. And Kristen next time. There we are. Okay. <laughs> Have a good day. You too. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.